When we started the project, I think one of the things that was most exciting to me, if I'm completely honest, is actually just like the geek out factor of doing something as cool as sticking VR on a roller coaster. Uh, cool. That was great! Holy cow. To be on the coaster in the first place, we've really got to use mobile VR. The thing with mobile VR at the moment is that there's still no positional tracking. So really, we had to provide the positional tracking, and that's what our system, Vector VR, does. So with Vector VR, we actually use a secondary sensor. We call it the control sensor. Uh, we have accelerometer, a gyroscope in there, we put the control sensor onto the ride and we run it around three or four times and we pass that through some algorithms and that creates a 3D version of the track for us. Then the sensor that actually sits next to you on the ride is constantly comparing its readings to that master set of readings. So all the way around it's able to stay in sync but there are key moments which are like spike points where you have um, a certain sensor that just ramps up. So for instance when you first leave the station there's a big accelerometer spike when you go over the lift hill, there's a, there's a big orientation spike. So there's those key moments that you can use to be absolutely sure that you're completely in sync. The headset's connected through power here over to the control pack. Um, but it's also connected via Bluetooth to get a signal from the control sensor here. The control pack is really the brains of the system. Underneath here we've got a battery pack that's fixed under the seats. The battery pack supplies all four um, people on this row, gives power to all their headsets and their control sensors. And at night, that is supplied via the overhead power rails. So at night, this system gets switched on and it recharges all the battery packs for a full day of use. Um, but essentially, it's giving power to the mobile phone. So it's probably the world's biggest mobile phone charger. It's actually quite tricky. I think people are still understanding the grammar of virtual reality because we can't dictate what people see. As a director, I need to be aware that people could be looking down, they could be looking straight ahead, they could be looking left or right. And so um, a good example is that in this experience, there's a moment where we have this planet explode, um, but we needed to do it in a section of the ride where there's quite a few turns. So it was quite hard to find the right spot to put that content to make sure people weren't gonna miss that really key moment in the content. So there's some quite interesting challenges from a storytelling perspective. All the tech that we've used to make this system um, is like a boy's dream because there's all these gadgets and widgets and software and cool stuff to make it happen. We've used, I don't know, probably 10 to 15 different programming languages. We've used electronics engineering. We've used mechanical engineering. And then obviously the bit that's like the day job for us is creating great content to show in the virtual reality experience. Oh, 